Theological truths are the things that we can know about God with a high degree of certainty. The Bible is inspired by God, making it the primary source of these truths. This is David Sparling for a final project for CTV 604 for spring 2017, Professor Andrew Quick. I ask you about love, probably quote me a sonnet. But you've never looked at a woman and been totally vulnerable. Known someone that could level you with her eyes. Feeling like God put an angel on earth just for you. Who could rescue you from the depths of hell. And you wouldn't know what it's like to be her angel. To have that love for her be there forever. Through anything. Through cancer. And you wouldn't know about sleeping, sitting up in a hospital room for two months, holding her hand, because the doctors could see in your eyes that the terms visiting hours don't apply to you. So when did you know, like, that she was the one for you? October 21st, 1975. Because it was game six of the World Series? Biggest game in Red Sox history? Yeah, sure. My friends and I had you know, slept out on the sidewalk all night to get tickets. You got tickets? Yep. Day of the game. We're sitting in a bar waiting for the game to start. And in walks this girl. It was an amazing game, though. You know, bottom of the eighth, Carbo tied it up at 6 6. It went to 12. Bottom of the 12th, in stepped Carlton Fisk. Old Pudge. Steps up to the plate. You know, he's got that weird stand. Yeah, yeah. And then, boom! He clocks it, you know. High, fly ball on the left field line. 35,000 people on their feet, yelling at the ball, but that's not because Fisk, he's waving at the ball like a madman. Yeah, get over, get over, get over. And then it hits a foul pole, and 35,000 fans, you know, they charge the field, you know? Get, get away, get away. Baby. I can't you believe you had tickets in that big game. Yeah. Did you rush the field? Uh, no, I wasn't there. What? No, I was in a bar having a drink with my future wife. You missed Pudge Fist's home run? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you should have seen her. She was a stunner. I don't care. Care if Helena Troy walks oh, into the Helena room. That's Troy. game six. Mm -hmm. Friends of yours, they let you get away with that? <gasps> they had to. What, what, what did you say to them? I just slid my ticket across the table and I said, sorry, guys, I got to see about a girl. <laughs> I got to go see about a girl? Yeah, that's what you said? I had to. And they let you get away with that? Oh, yeah, they saw in my eyes and I meant it. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you, Will. That's why I'm not talking right now about some girl I saw at a bar 20 years ago and how I always regretted not going over and talking to her. I don't regret the 18 years I was married to Nancy. I don't regret the six years I had to give up counseling when she got sick. And I don't regret the last years when she got really sick. And I sure as hell don't regret missing a damn game. That's regret. The last lines spoken by Robin Williams in this conversation makes a connection for Matt Damon's character and a pivotal moment given to him by a real person with flaws who loved and was loved unconditionally. It's the constant and consistent care of Robin Williams' character and unshakable embrace that frees him from his past and allows him to open up to his future. Sean, if the professor calls about that job, just tell him, sorry, I had to go see about a girl. Well. Stole my life. Of the theological truth is Galatians 4 6. As we experience always love, may we in turn go in pursuit of those who are abused and abandoned and care for them from the heart. In the 1976 movie Rocky, the first image we see is a mosaic of a Byzantine church on the ceiling and what seems to be a church that has been converted into a boxing arena. The metaphorical connection is clear as the camera pans down to Rocky, suggesting he is a messianic figure as the camera dollies back. It also suggests that God is watching over Rocky and further signifies a connection between religion, life, and boxing. Bob Bowie, you get winner's share, $65, less $15, locker and corner man, $5 shower and towel, and 7% tax. Comes to $40.55. When do I fight again? Maybe two weeks. 
Oh, you got a problem today? Never mind my problem. What's your problem? My problem is I've been talking to your man Mike. I want to know how come I've been put out of my lot. Because Dipper needed it. Dipper's a contender. He's a climber. You know what you are? What? A tomato. This is the land of opportunity, right? So Apollo Creed on January 1st gives a local underdog fighter an opportunity. This is what I'm looking for. The Italian Stallion. Rocky Balboa? Never heard of him. Rocky, I've got a proposition. Would you be interested in fighting Apollo Creed for the World Heavyweight Championship? It's the chance of a lifetime. Because I don't like the Bible, sis. He ain't gonna get a second chance. You're gonna become a very dangerous person. <laughs> You're breaking the ribs. this fight. It really don't matter if this guy opens my head either. Because all I want to do is go to distance. Now you're looking very great today, you know that? Hmm? I gotta go now, but uh, don't you leave town, huh? Wish me luck. I'm gonna need it. Good luck. Riding in a boat is he supposed to be George Washington? Obviously so. He's got the hat on the whole shot. Look at that. Yeah, it's been confirmed. Well, all of you are in the He looks like a big flag. Well, that champion is smiling now. He's toying with his man. He's trying to give the, the fans their money's worth. Stop. Hey, I don't believe it. Hey. The champ is down. Yes, he is. This is the first time the champion has ever been knocked down. Your nose is broke. How's it look? That's an improvement. He doesn't know it's a damn show. He thinks it's a damn fight. Finish this bum and let's go home. What is keeping him up, Bill? I don't know. Six, seven, eight, nine. Rocky's training, which is highly cinematic, represents his personal transformation and ascent. The theological truth suggests Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When the 15th round, oh, you're coming out. Oh, you yeah. oh, Rocky. Hey. Rocky. Hey. Rocky. Hey. Rocky. Hey. Where's your hat? I love you. This is what I've been working on. Have a lollipop. Nice. I cannot deactivate until you say, you are satisfied with your care. Well then, I'm satisfied with my care. In Big Hero 6, it is an animated story of two brothers who are orphaned and living with their aunt. The older of the two designs Baymax, which is a computer healthcare provider. The older brother dies in an attempt to save people from a fire. The younger brother is left Baymax and the two bond over time fighting an evil villain. What are you doing? I have found where your tiny robot wants to go. Uh, what are you doing? I am downloading a database on personal loss. It's gonna tear itself apart. We need to get out of here now, Baymax. My sensor is detecting signs of life. The life signs are female. She appears to be in hypersleep. Callahan's daughter? She's still alive. Abigail. Let's go get her. The portal is destabilizing. You'll never make it. She's alive in there. 
Someone has to help. Still a way I can get you both to safety. I cannot deactivate until you say you are satisfied with your care. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. What about you? You are my patient. B B Baymax, Your no. health is my only concern. Stop! And in the end, Baymax sacrifices himself. I can't lose you two. Hero, I will always be with you. I'm satisfied with my care. The theological truth here comes from Mark 2.17. From the New International Version, on hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Baymax willingly allows himself to perish so that others might be saved. Baymax is resurrected at the end of the story. I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. Hello, hero. <laughs> All four of them were in the same company in the 29th Division, but we split them up after the Sullivan brothers died on the Juno. Uh, any uh, contact with the fourth son, James? No, sir. He was dropped about 15 miles inland near Newville. In the 1998 movie, which earned five Oscars for director Steven Spielberg, Saving Private Ryan had a small group of soldiers after the D-Day invasion go to find the last of four brothers alive so that their mother would not receive four folded U.S. flags. Nearly the whole group of soldiers who traveled deep to find Ryan are killed, and all of them are less than thrilled with the task of trying to save one man. You and I are taking a squad over to Newville on a public relations mission. Boy, you leaving a squad? Some private in the 101st lost three brothers and he's got a ticket home. James Francis, Ryan? Yes, sir. How'd you guess that? Your brothers were killed in combat. Which, which ones? All of them. Our orders are to bring you back. I have my orders too, sir. They don't include me abandoning my post. Our orders are to hold this bridge at all costs. I've tried to live my life the best I could. I hope that was enough. I hope that at least in your eyes, I've earned what all of you have done for me. In the end, Captain Miller tells Ryan to earn this. The theological truth here is that you can never earn grace the problem is the movie is saying we need more than the word of God for assurance of our salvation. We cannot earn a gift, we can merely receive it. 1 John 4, God is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the probation for our sins. In the 2009 movie Up, Carl Fredrickson, who seeks to honor the memory of his late wife, Ellie, by traveling to South America. What do I do now, Ellie? He does so 
in quite an unconventional manner by inflating thousands of helium-filled balloons that carry his home to Paradise Falls. Accidentally along for the ride is a young boy, Russell, who together with Carl realize they have both been lonely and need one another. <laughs> so long, boys! I'll send you a postcard from Paradise Falls! Please let me in. No. Oh, all right. You can come in. Russell! Kid. Easy, Russell. <laughs> oh, I am ready to not be a pop. Sorry about your house, Mr. Fredrickson. You know, it's just a house. In Christian tradition and in biblical exposition, it is a key virtue. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. By the fire, your grandma will set your flag on. Father has died, Charlie. Charlie? Anything else? Oh, that's it. Listen, Charlie, if there's anything I can right. do, just call. The 1998 four time Oscar winner Rain Man is about a self absorbed man played by Tom Cruise who finds after his father's death that he has a brother, an autistic savant, a role that earned Dustin Hoffman a Best Actor Oscar. And I'm sorry, son. I can see that you're disappointed. Disappointed? Why should I be disappointed? I got rose bushes, didn't I? I got a used car, didn't I? W what's his name? Got what'd you call him? The uh... beneficiary. Right, right, beneficiary. He got three million dollars, but he didn't get the rose bushes. How do you know this car? Definitely know this car. It's 1949 Buick Roadmaster, straight eight, Fireball eight, only eight thousand ninety-five production models. Dad lets me drive slow on a driveway, but not on Monday. Definitely not on Monday. Who's your dad? Sanford Babbitt. He's retarded. Autistic. Actually, high functioning. Uh, there are dangers everywhere for Raymond. 
routines, rituals. It's uh, all he has to protect himself. The point is, why didn't anybody tell me I had a brother? What would you have done about it? He doesn't understand the concept of money. Hoffman is brilliant, and to watch Cruz shed all those preconceived notions about what life was and embrace the fact that he has a brother is truly remarkable filmmaking. Listen, my father died. You know that he died last week? Did they tell you that? I don't know. They... Well, I'm not doing anything on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Let's go to L.A. Yeah. Yes! Raymond was left all the money and I got nothing. So? So I'm going to keep him till I get my half. I deserve that. Hey, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. I want her baby. Water. I want her baby. What, what baby? Me? I'm not Bernie. Yeah. Hey, look at me, please. Water, Bernie. Please, please, please. It's okay. I go fall book now. That's why I put you away. How'd you hurt me? You seeing that, Ray? You catching it? Yeah, falling on yeah? the ground. What do I have left? Two checks. One eight. One king. One six. Two aces, one ten, one nine, one five. One five. Yeah. You are beautiful, man. You're not willing to, to gamble with that. What is this? It's a very big check. $250,000. And no strings attached. You just walk away, Charlie. It's not about the money anymore. It's... It's about, you know, I... Just don't understand. Why didn't he tell me I had a brother? Why didn't you tell me I had a brother? Why didn't anyone ever tell me that I had a brother? Because it'd been nice to know him for more than just the past six days. Through all the faith with my brother Charlie. No, no, no. Okay. It's just everything. Can you make Look, that choice, yeah, one right. or the other? Yeah, go back to Walbrook. Stay, right, right. right. stay, stay back at Walbrook. All right. All right. Stay back at Walbrook. Okay. Go back to Walbrook. Just, just, stay with just your hold on here. No. Stay back at no. Walbrook. All right. Stay back all right. All right. All right. Major point. Okay. Stay. You, you don't have to humiliate him. Stay back, Ray. It's okay. It's over. Yeah. Because you see, these uh, Dr. Bruner really likes you a lot, and he's probably going to want to take you back with him. You know? Yeah. But I just want you to know that what I said about being on the road with you, I meant you know, connecting. I like having you for my brother. I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> yes, you are. The theological truths here are those dealing with love, greed, and brothers. I have a brother myself, and I'm fond of Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Donut Kappa! Did you see those leopard print jeggings? <laughs> oh! 2016's Zootopia speaks out to stereotyping with a rookie bunny cop and a cynical con artist fox. Oh, I love your hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Come to Papa. Ah! Ah! So intimidate me all you want. I'm going to find out what you did to that otter if it's the last thing I do. Ma, then I have only one request. Say hello to Grandmama. I some. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, 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 I didn't see nothing. I'm not saying nothing. And you never will. Please. No, no, no. If you're mad at me about the rug, I've got more rugs. Oh, Daddy. It's time for our dinner. What did we say? No, I think you want at my wedding. I have to, baby. Daddy has to. I some. No, no, no. Wait, no, no, no. Wait. She's the bunny that saved my life yesterday. From that giant donut. This bunny? Yeah. Hi. Hi. I love your dress. Oh, thank you. Oh. Put them down. For the theological truths, I'm suggesting John 1, 46. 
Jesus was the victim of stereotyping when Philip told Nathanael about the mysterious man from Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathanael replied, pigeonholing Jesus as just another unscrupulous Nazarene. You have done me a great service. I will help you find the otter. I will take your kindness and pay it forward. I have a shame. In 2010, the King's Speech won four Oscars. The story of King George VI of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, his impromptu ascension to the throne, and the speech therapist to help the unsure monarch become worthy of it. I've been home with my wife, and no one would give a damn. Well, please don't do that. I'm sorry. I believe sucking smoke into your lungs will kill you. My physicians say it relaxes the, the, the throat. Well, they're idiots. They've all been knighted. It makes it official, then. Mad King. George the Stammerer, who let his people down so badly in their hour of need. What are you doing? Get up, you can't sit there, get up! Why not? It's a chair. No, it, that is not a chair, that is, that, it, that is St. Edward's chair. People have that carved their names on it. chair is the seat on which every king it's and queen... It's held by a large rock. That is the stone of Schoon. You are, are trivializing oh, you everything. You trivialize... I don't care you, how many royal listen assholes to me. have sat listen, listen to me! Listen to me! Listen to you by what right? By divine right, if you must. I'm your king. No, you're not. You told me so yourself. You said you didn't want it. Why should I waste my time listening because to you? Because I have a right to be oh, and I what? have a voice! I'm a thistle seed. I'm a sieve of sifted thistles. A sieve of unsifted thistles. A sieve? of sifted thistles and a sieve of unsifted thistles <clears throat> because I'm a thistle sifted. Darling, make sure it's not switched off. Remember, the red light will blink four times and I've asked them to turn it off because we don't want that evil eye staring at you all the way through. One minute, sir. I'm sure you'll be splendid. Forty seconds, sir. Logue. However this turns out, I don't know how to thank you for what you've done. Knighthood? Forget everything else and just say it to me. Say it to me as a friend. The King's speech artfully captures an extraordinary friendship between a king and a commoner. In the context of this most unlikely relationship, the two men develop a deep, lasting friendship in spite of cultural forces that would disallow such mutual affection and commitment. In this grave, our perhaps the most fateful in our history, I send 
to every household of my her peoples. Both at home. And overseas. This message. Your first wartime speech. Congratulations. I expect I shall have to do a great deal more. Thank you, Logue. The theological truth mirrors a similar friendship to David and Jonathan in the Bible when David was not yet king or from a royal family. 1 Samuel 18.1, Jonathan loved David more than his own soul and took great delight in David. 1 Samuel 19.1. Well done, my friend. Thank you. Your Majesty. Excuse me. Ah, uh, I was I was looking for um diversion. What? <laughs> so long, sucker. <laughs> oh, I heard all over. Wait, I know you. No, you don't. I get that a lot. I look like a lot of people. No, no, no. I do. <gasps> From Pixar in 2015, we have Inside Out where young Riley is uprooted from the Midwest life and moved to San Francisco. Her emotions, joy, fear, anger, disgust, and sadness, conflict on how to best handle her new situation. Riley's imaginary friend! You really do know me? Well, of course! Riley loves playing with you! You two are best friends! I went to all of your concerts! Yeah, I blow a mean nose! Watching you play tag was such a treat! Two-time world champ! Oh, and remember your rockets! Of course! It runs on song power! That's right! Your theme song! Who's your friend who likes to play? Bing bong! Bing bong! His rocket makes you yell hooray! Bing, bing bong! Bing, bing bong! What are you doing out here? Well, there's not much call for imaginary friends lately, so, uh... You know, um... <sighs> hey, hey, don't be sad. Tell you what, when I get back up to headquarters, I'll make sure Riley remembers you. You will? Of course! She'd love that. <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life! We have to get back up there. Joy was stuck down here. We might as well be on another planet. <laughs> In the midst of the film, Riley's make-believe friend, happy-go-lucky Bing Bong, dies on screen by sacrificing himself in a pit of lost memories in order to save Joy. Come on, Joy, one more time. I got a feeling about this one. Bing Bong, Bing Bong,
The theological truths are self-sacrificial love. Jesus' logic of sacrificial love is summed up in John 15, 13. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Take her to the moon for me, okay? I don't believe this was a fair test of my command abilities. And why not? Because there was no way to win. A no-win situation is a possibility every commander may face. Has that never occurred to you? In 1982, Gene Roddenberry wrote what is considered to be one of the best original Star Trek movies. This one, Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan. The movie opens up with an explanation of what is called the Kobayashi Maru, which is a test given to all Starfleet potential captains in a no-win situation. No, sir. It is not. How we deal with death is at least as important as how we deal with life, wouldn't you say? As I indicated, Admiral, that thought had not occurred to me. Well, now you have something new to think about. Carry on. No! You'll flood the whole compartment to die. Sir, he's dead already. Ship. Out of danger. Yes. Don't grieve him. Admiral, it is logical. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Or the one. I have been, and always shall be, your friend. The movie culminates with Leonard Nimoy's character Spock sacrificing himself for the crew, his friends. The theological truths here are similar to the previous ones with John 15, 13, as well as a nod to the prophet Isaiah, writes about the suffering servant who sacrifices himself for the needs of the many. And of course, there is Jesus, who concretely reveals the true character of God precisely in this self-sacrificial love. I hope you've enjoyed this look at these 10 films and thank you for watching.